Hi, I'm David Riding. I'm from the Australia Council in the Early Career Artists and Producers section. We're the area of council that's interested in artists in their first five years of their career. It can be any artist and any art form supported by Australia Council. We run three programs. All of them are really Googleable, so I'm not going to say the websites. The first one's Art Start, second one's Jump Mentorships, and the first one's Early Career Residencies. I'm going to talk about each one in turn, and I'm broadly going to talk about who gets funded. I'm not going to give details about the selection criteria or the applications, you can find all of those online, but I'm going to give you the sense of the people who are getting funded so you have an idea of where you sit with that. The first one I'm going to talk about is Art Start. Now Art Start's a grant available to graduates of any arts course within the first three years after graduating. What Art Start gives you is $10,000 to work on your professional career. It doesn't give you money for a program or a project, it's purely to spend on you. With that $10,000, you have a year's worth of activities. Now, part of that activity, you can also spend up to half of your grant, which could be up to $5,000 on equipment. And that can be any equipment that's going to help your professional practice, which is quite unique in Australia Council. It's very, very rare that you're allowed to spend money on what we call capital expenditure. People get funded for Art Start, and we fund about 100 or 200 a year, so it's quite well funded. Our people have a clear view where they're going to be in five years, and can express it in a few points. From that, they can broadly suggest what sort of activities they need to do over the next five years to get there, and then in, the, in one specific question, say what they need to do in the next year, what is really pressing, what that $10,000 is going to help them do in a year. And to back that up, they have a why. So every activity that they say, which is leading to one of their goals, there's a clear reason for and a clear why, and all of that goes down to a budget. It's really quite a simple process, and the applicants who can get that spine of the Art Start application generally get funded. The second program I want to talk to is about Jump Mentorships. Jump Mentorships gives you $10,000 to work with a mentor on a program. It's a really important thing to remember about Jump Mentorships. While your program's important, the mentorship is what it's about. So your program is helping the mentorship. So the people who get funded, the ones who have a really strong mentor, mentor with the best mentor they can possibly get with a program that helps them. It's really hard for us to fund people who come in with a really good program where the mentor is just helping the program. A really good example of that would be a script writer who's worked on a really good script and has got a dramaturg in to help them. Our third program is called Early Career Residencies and it's very similar to JUMP where JUMP will, you find someone to work with. The difference with Early Career Residencies is you find an organisation, be it an arts organisation or a non-arts organisation that you want to work with on a project. Like JUMP, it's about the match. It's about you and the organisation, not the project, though there's a project attached. Tricky thing with this one is the organisation needs to benefit from you being there. So if you're looking at doing a residency of a program that already has a residency program, there's not much benefit. But if it's a unique or new possibility, there seems to be more benefit for the organisation. Sorry, just miles away. So that's broadly the three programs. I want to quickly talk about your funding application. And it can seem to be a, quite a daunting process. It shouldn't be a daunting process. All of our funding programs ask for a URL. And one of the common mistakes that we find with artists is they'll just link to their website. Occasionally some people are really, really poor with it and link to their Facebook page, things I wouldn't recommend. It's an opportunity for you to make a brochure for your application. And seeing it's so easy now to do a Tumblr or a Gmail blog, you can do a spe specific targeted support for your application. And that happens on arts, art, jump or residencies. And it's a unique thing for ECAP. Another thing that scares early career artists is budgets. They do need to balance because the, the peers, and I'll talk about the peers in a minute, do judge on the viability. And if your budget is showing that you don't have enough money, they'll, they'll wonder if the project will happen. So it's a really easy thing that a lot of people don't do is making sure your budget balances. It should also make sense. So every figure that is on it should be back upable. I don't think back is a word. Forgive me for that. But so that you've Googled everything. So if you're saying you're flying to Sydney, you've Googled what the price is off Webjet at that stage. If you're buying something, you've Googled that and it's written there in the notes. They're really simple tips that a lot of people don't do and that's why they don't get funded. How is your application assessed is also a question. It seems to be quite a murky process. Um, what happens is that we will get all the applications and then they will be sent through to peers who are art form experts. Uh, generally, uh, ECAP, because it's a cross art form, it's a cross art form panel. So you'll have people representing from around Australia around art forms. But 
they're very aware of the challenges of being an early career artist and also very aware of being able to move outside their art form. They'll read every application they get and they'll rank them and they'll rank them on criteria. Now generally our criteria are the impact, so that's the impact on your program on yourself and your career, the viability, can it happen, and that's obviously what I was saying about budget but also the timeline and the calibre, and that's the calibre of you as an artist and where you're going to go to as well as who you're working with and probably more who you're working with. And you remember I was saying in Jump, the people who get funded the ones who work with the best possible mentor and you can see that with the selection criteria on calibre. So they'll mark out of seven each of those, so you'll get a mark averaged out of 21. Generally, in, a, in our programs you need to score 18 to get funded, so you can imagine it's pretty high and it's, it, you really need to be making sure you're thinking about the impact of your program, the calibre of the people you're working with and the viability of what you're suggesting. So the peers will get every application and they'll read every application and they'll read your support material and they'll look at your URL. They'll get about 200 applications, so they've got a lot to read. And what they'll do is they'll score each of the criteria, the impact, the calibre and the viability out of seven. And then so you'll get a score out of 21 once it's averaged. Generally to be funded you need to score about 18 or above. What happens next is the peers meet. They'll either meet virtually via a phone conference or Skype or they'll meet in the room and they'll discuss the applications so that every application gets a chance to be represented and if there is a big difference between opinion of peers they can discuss those to make sure there's a consistency. There's not, nothing else in the room, there's no quotas, there's no so much of this art form, so much of this state, it's really the best applications. Um, they might not know you and they generally don't so sometimes there's some sort of thought about why isn't there a peer from Queensland they don't generally know the people, they're looking at what you're suggesting on paper. So it's really important and one of the things we say to artists is make sure you know who you are so you can represent yourself. You may not get the grant, which is upsetting. Um, it's about 17% of, of people who apply for JUMP would get it, about 25% of arts art would get it, and about 17% of early career residencies. That doesn't mean you won't get it next time and your first thing of, of not getting it, besides obviously being disappointed, is giving us a call and getting feedback on ways you can represent yourself better. It's a lot of people applying, it's a big country, but it doesn't mean you've been rejected forever because you don't get it once. It could be a different round of different people and one of the things we always em uh, implore early career artists is make sure you give us a call. It's very important to remember that people who work in grant organisations are funded to help you get funded. So you should be making use of those us as resources and also making sure you're ringing us prior to putting a grant application in to chat about it. So the three programs I talked about again, there's Art Start and it would Google Art Start, it's got its own website and it's got a quiz to show you if you're eligible or not, plus also it shows people who've got it in the past so you can look at case studies and a lot of people get Art Start so you probably know people who have and I would invite you, if not implore you, to, call, to find those people and have a chat to them. Second program is Jump Mentoring. Again, Google Jump Mentoring. It has its own website and it has got the list of people who've got a Jump Mentorship at the moment. A lot of people from Brisbane in Jump Mentorship in 2013. So very good to have a look at them and see what sort of projects they're doing. And the third program is Early Career Residencies, the program that will be opening in December or November this year. It's on the Australia Council website. Use the search function or have a look at the grants. It's a bit of a tricky one to find. It doesn't have its own website. Australia Council has a lot of other grants which early career artists sh should look for. And, and in all those cases, make sure you ring up the council and have a chat. As I said, those people are there to have a talk to you about the process. It, you know, they're there for you to give you the best possible chance to get your grant.